Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Here's the continuation of Project 5.0. Today we're going to be adding the large Hertz SP4.900 and rear speakers, but first I wanted to recap where we're at so far. We just put the Soundstream Reserve HDHU 14 Plus radio in. This bike was a police bike, so it had no radio. We also upgraded our thumb controls from the police controls to the Electro Glide or street glide controls with thumb control options. We also showed you in the previous video how to take it from a police bike to a civilian use bike and the wiring under the seat so the controls would work. And we also put Hertz SX165neo, awesome speakers from Hertz up here in the front. So that's a recap of where we're at. If you want to see that, we've got two other videos that go over this process. Now moving forward today, amplifier, rear speakers, let's get this audio knocked out. So hang out as we finish Project 5.0's audio build. So let's go over everything we're going to do today to Project 5.0. That's our nickname for our 2014 Electroglide Police motorcycle. Now this is my personal bike, so I'm really excited. Normally I'm building your bike, you're getting a, I get to see your face at the end, you're so happy. But today I get to enjoy it, it's going to be mine. So also this bike will be used at our event, so we're going to bring it out. We'll be working the Hog Rally at Smoky Mountain Harley-Davidson. We'll be at Daytona in the spring and many, many other events will happen in the future. Hopefully you get to hear this in person or come down when we're not having a rally here to volunteer audio in Oliver Springs and I'll let you hear the bike in person as well. So let's talk about what we're doing. First off, we're using a set of Precision Power uh, 6x9 cut kits. Uh, this is something we re-logo with Hertz logos and use for Hertz speakers because currently Hertz doesn't make their own cut kit yet. We're going to be using the Hertz SP4.900 amplifier. This is my favorite amplifier of all times. It's super efficient, very, very low distortion, and extremely powerful. It's a 1,000 watt RMS, 2,000 watt peak, and in our forum configuration, we're running between our SX165 Neo 65 and our SX690 Neo 6x9s. We're going to see about 180 watts RMS to each speaker. That is a tremendous amount of continuous power. That means we're peaking well over 350 watts per speaker. That is a lot of power going to a four speaker bike build. What excites me about this with this additional power, these six by nines get down like a sub. I mean, they have excellent bass without taking up a lot of space in our bag. And with our cut kits, we're gonna be bringing them up very high and leaning them forward. There's about a 15 degree angle on them to give the driver or the rider a much better sound than a standard lid where they go straight up. We're gonna go through some precautions to make sure these are sealed as good as possible to make sure that they do not leak as we go through this. So I'm gonna show you how to do the cut kits. I'm gonna show you how to run a backbone wiring and your rear wiring disconnects to your bags as well as how to install the amplifier. So let's get the bike apart and get started. All right, so first step, I'm gonna remove the T25 Torx bolts from the inside of the fairing. Well, we've got our bike up on our let's roll dolly system so you'll see this fairing twist around but allows us to move it uh, not only for us to be able to get to things easier, but it also allows you to get a better view as we take this thing apart. So we've got two T25 Torx bolts on each side. There's a longer one at the top of the fairing and a shorter one at the bottom. You definitely want to make sure and put those back in the right place. And as we go apart, we have a little storage container. You can pick these containers up places like Home Depot or Lowe's. Really, really handy to put all your bolts in as you go and keep you organized. So when you get done, all the bolts are back in the bike and you know that you are finished. All right, again, there's a shorter T25 at the bottom. I, I keep saying where the short one and the long one goes because I've seen people, thank the Lord I haven't done it, uh, but they put the long one in the bottom, they tighten it up and the bolt comes out and it puts a dimple outward in their fairing and maybe even busts the paint. So we wanna be real careful that we put these bolts back in the place where they were. So again, long ones are at the top, short at the bottom, those four are out, let's go to the front. Let's get our windshield bolts out and get this fairing off. All right, always before you take your outer fairing off, make sure you have a fender protector on your front fender. You may not have a Harley specific one, but lay a towel or something thick there. So if you drop a bolt, drop a nut, something falls, you don't ding that fender, you don't chip the paint. Let's take our outer two T25 bolts out of our windshield. We always do the center one last. The outer two are the short ones. The middle one's gonna be a long one that goes all the way through and holds everything together. All right, so if you have lights like this, hopefully later I get to remove these. I, I wanna go something a little bit more sleek, but 
you don't have to take these off. A lot of people unbolt them. You can actually grab hold of them and just twist them slightly. Set my screwdriver over here. I want to roll off. Grab these lights and just twist them to the side. And that will allow you to remove that fairing without having to take the lights off. So let's take our middle bolt loose. We're not going to take it all the way off yet. We're just going to unloosen it enough that we can remove our windshield. Now we'll go ahead and take it the rest of the way out. I don't ever take it all the way out. I don't only take it all the way loose and I'll pull it off with the fairing, especially because a lot of them have a trim panel here and I'm just one man, so I don't have enough hands to hold everything. So we're gonna pull it back enough that we can unplug our headlight, take our fairing off. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the seat. I'm gonna take this one Phillips screw out and it really is that easy. One Phillips screw holds the seat on. We do offer a locking system from Robert Becker Designs, which we're gonna make a video soon on that on this bike because I don't want somebody having the ability to steal the seat. I hope to go to a CVO style seat. We're gonna put a lot of money in it. But once you get your seat off, there's your computer sitting right there. So if they do take your seat off and steal it, which is very common now, a lot of times they steal your computer too. Now your bike doesn't run, you're out a lot of money, and it'd be a really bad day when you can get a simple lock to go on the back of the seat. All right, I went ahead and put a pair of gloves on because we're gonna be taking the gas tank loose here in a minute. Not only does gas dry your skin out, it's not good to have on it. It also smells pretty bad throughout the day, even if you wash your hands. So I went ahead and pulled my gas tank vent up from the side of the frame. I just unplugged the uh, fuel level sending unit where it plugs in here, it's the gray plug. We're gonna undo this secondary vent. At that point, we've got our electrical connections loose from our gas tank. Now I'm gonna remove the two bolts at the rear of the tank and at the front. A little rubber caps over the front ones, you wanna just pull those off. Now let's get our bolts out. So these are normally a 13 millimeter. Somebody's changed these, but it still works. All right, now I've got one on each side at the front. Again, putting all these bolts in our storage bin as we go. So at the end, we make sure they're all back on. All right, let's come around here and undo the gas line. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, I'll lay a little rag under here because you're gonna get a couple drops of gas once you disconnect this. The great thing about this gas tank design and this fuel line design is once it's removed, it shuts the fuel off. So it doesn't matter if this is empty or full. It does matter as how heavy it is, but it doesn't matter as far as leaking. So this little chrome sleeve, just lift it up, wiggle that fuel line, you'll see it unsnaps. As soon as it unsnaps, you see there's just a little bit of gas, but it's shut off now. And we are disconnected and ready to take our tank off. All right, so let's go and take our tank off, set it to the side. Now, now that our tank's off, we've exposed the backbone of the bike. Now in our previous video, when we installed the radio, I showed you how to run the power and ground down to the battery. I did that in two separate videos because a lot of people are just gonna do the radio. Later, they're gonna do the amplifier and I just didn't want it confusing uh, doing it all at one time for those people. So if you have, if you're doing them at the same time, definitely run them at the same time. You don't have to do this in two separate steps. But we're gonna disconnect and remove this cover. Just some little push clips on the side. Sometimes there's a big zip tie around it. Sometimes there's some tape. Cut the zip tie, cut the tape. But remove this cover and uh, run your wiring correctly down inside of this backbone. Many, many times we pull these off and we find out somebody's ran a power or ground wire around the side. We don't want it to fall down and get on the motor. This is definitely the right way to do it. And you see how easy it is to get to this point. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove two bolts that are holding this vent in and get it out of the way just for vis visual purposes. I'm sure I could do this without it, but I want you to be able to see clearly what we're doing. All right, so first step, we're gonna clean this plate where our amplifier goes. Now that we've got our fairing off, this large area here, you notice we were missing a bolt last time because somebody had taken this apart and we lost some hardware. We found some additional hardware and got everything back in place. I want to make sure that everything's bolted in. So I'm going to cl clean this really well because now we're going to take a very, very large piece of Velcro. This stuff's industrial Velcro. Once this amp sticks, it's not going anywhere. Let's grab our amp and go over it and get it stuck to it. All right, so let me show you this work of art. So this is why I believe 
Now I'm a little partial, but I believe Volunteer Audio does the best job of plug and play amps. We take all the hard part out and we do it as easy as possible for you to be able to do your own install as you see in this video. All of this takes a lot of time to build, but we build it in-house. It's all plug and play harnessing. It all plugs into the radio. Everything about the amplifier has been preset, the gains, the crossovers, everything's done with, with proper tools. This isn't done by ear. This is done with digital distortion detectors and crossover calibrators. We power it up with these radios. We set it. So when you buy it from us and you say, I've got the Soundstream radio or I've got a GTS radio or a GT radio, we've got it set properly for you. But on the underside, you'll see we have put this industrial Velcro. We've also not put it over the serial number. That's kind of important. We want to make sure that if we ever had a warranty issue, we can view this serial number. We don't want to deface that. Uh, the amp is awesome because it's going to fit in this area. Hertz built it to fit perfectly on this plate. So we're going to unstick that Velcro. We've cleaned it real well, and we're going to stick it here to this amp, uh, to this radio plate. All right, so it is stuck down there. It's not going anywhere. If you really wanted to, the outer bolt holes line up with two holes in the plate and you could put a bolt and a nut in here. It is absolutely not necessary. Um, let's go over our harnessing too because I want to show you just how well this is done. So on our Soundstream radio, let me cut a few zip ties loose real quick. We'll go over this. All right, so we'd secured it up in the last video because I want you to see normally the thumb control module we want to kind of keep high. We want to make sure it's not just hanging in the bottom. The key is this is the only part that's not IPX rated. It's not sealed from water. Its boards are coated. So if they get wet, they may act up, but then it shouldn't corrode and it should come back to working. But the thing is, if we mount it up high, this is never a problem because water doesn't get in it. If you let it hang down, the water is going to, that gets in here, will flow down the harnessing right into the box and it'll cause you problems. Putting it up like this, we just do not have problems out of the box. But let's remove our original harness from our Soundstream Reserve Radio. So we're going to simply unplug that harness. This harness has our thumb control module in it, so we're going to remove it. Now if you bought this all as one package, we're going to have this pre-installed in the amp harness and you're not going to get two harnesses. When you buy them separate, maybe you're adding the amplifier on later, it's going to come just like you see it here. But we've already built our Soundstream harness into our amp connector, or our amp harness. So we're going to plug our thumb control box in first. This is very important. If you plug this in later, <clears throat> if you plug this in after you've applied power to these connectors, this box will actually learn itself as the wrong radio and your thumb controls won't work right. So we just want to make sure that we do this right. So our 90 degree portion plugs right into the back of the radio. Let me open the connector up. Just like that, our factory harness, which we added the harness to this, because remember, this is a police bike. Police bikes do not have any factory radio wiring, and in the previous videos, we put that in here. But our factory style harness that we added now will plug in to this connector. So I'm gonna do it like this. And that cam lock's gonna twist, and that can't come undone. Now I'm just gonna secure the wiring back up here like we had it where everything looks good, everything clears. And now all we've got to do is run our power and ground wire under the gas tank, under this backbone harness and connect it to the battery. And we're going to use our rear connector that you see here. We're going to connect our backbone harness to that and run it back for our rear speakers. So let me do a little bit of securing. We'll get this backbone connector plugged in. We'll start running it back to the, to the battery and under that tank. All right, so Amps mounted, and you see we've done a little bit of wire management. All we use is some zip ties. Just use your brain. Make sure you get the harnessing up where it's not going to interfere with the fairing going back on. Secure it where that thumb control module's up high. It can definitely be done. Just take your time, put a few zip ties around it so it doesn't get wet and it doesn't quit working. Uh, when you buy this amplifier, or any of our plug and play connectors, we're already going to have the power and ground connected to it. In this case, it's eight gauge oxygen free copper. That's what's required for the Hertz amp. Uh, you get a, a 10 gauge or eight gauge, depending on which amplifier that, that you're purchasing from us. But all the hard parts again are done. Fuses installed, fuse holders been double checked, tightened, zip tied closed. So it never comes loose underneath the, uh, underneath the battery area there. So nothing ever shorts out. 
This is a true disconnect where you can unplug it. If we ever had a warranty issue with the amp, which is three year warrantied, you could unplug here, unplug here, there's a few connectors, and we just swap the amplifier. So it's very, very easy if we ever had a warranty issue. Very high quality amp, so I don't foresee a lot of that happening, uh, but I definitely wanna make sure that if it does, that it's as painless as possible to get you taken care of. But all we're gonna do is run this wire, and I've already plugged in our backbone connector up here, ran it back, we're gonna run our wiring back, now, what I like about our Let's Roll Dolly is while it's up, I can turn the fairing both ways. I can double check just how much wiring lead we have running back so that nothing ever gets pulled out of whack or in a bond, we don't break any wiring or cause it where we don't have full turn ability. So definitely check that as you run your wiring, get it secured, then move your fairing. You know, if you're on, the, on your stand or, or you know, on your kickstand, no problem, move it back and forth. Just make sure you have plenty of room. But I'm gonna get this run down the side. We'll pick back up on the other side at the backbone get it ran down to the battery area. All right, so we pulled our backbone harness and our power and ground up the side. I just put a couple zip ties to secure it uh, with the factory harnessing. It looks very factory as it runs up through there. All we're gonna do is lay this now inside this backbone area to our gas tank. Now we're gonna make sure that when we put our cover on that none of these factory wires have you know, sneaked out the side, got crimped up. So let's get that cover and put it on. Starting at the front. You'll hear it snap as you go, as it clips in. There is no real science to this, or reason why we go one area or the other. There's a shallower spot on one side, so it's more so toward the middle or the right side to get these to clip back closed. Let's see where our wires are. All right. So make sure you get your brake lines back where they go. It's very important. We don't want to mess any of that up as we take our tank on and off. All right, so now that that is back secured, we have our speaker wires and our power and ground on the ran back here under the seat. We can go and put our tank back on and move forward, so. All right, I just can't stand to see one all stripped down without the tank on it. So as soon as I can get it back on, I'll put it on. Just looks a lot better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the bolts back in the gas tank. Normally start all the bolts before I tighten any of them, especially because these back ones are slotted, they're adjustable. So you gotta get these front ones lined up before you tighten the rear ones. All right, I'll grab my ratchet and go and tighten them all up. Forget to put your little rubber caps back on the front of the gas tank. All right, so let's run all this wiring back where it goes. Run our vent that runs down this side of the frame. All right, so let's check out where this runs. So you'll see as it comes down here, it's near the exhaust. We definitely don't want it touching. From the factory, there is a zip tie here that it runs through. So just go ahead and feed it back through that zip tie. That'll keep it over to the side. If that zip tie is too tight or it's broken, just install a new one. Quite often we see that at this point, they're brittle or they're old and they've broke. But that one's still good. All right, I'm gonna leave the uh, fuel center disconnected at the moment just so hooking up my vent and my return lines, because now we're gonna do our cut kits, then we're gonna pull our battery box up and we're gonna go ahead and connect our battery wiring and get all of our wiring installed. So let's move on to cutting these lids, get our, get our speakers in. All right, so first thing, look in your bag, make sure it's been emptied out because as we cut and debris falls in there, we don't want it to get on belongings, we don't wanna accidentally cut something that we forgot in the bag, and we'll vacuum that out when we're done. So we're gonna take some just painter's tape, we're gonna tape, tape off the top of our lid. 
Now I understand my future plan is to change these bags, to change these lids. We'll transfer these at that point. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get a some audio playing. And this is an audio company and first step's always to make it sound good. We can easily transfer these speakers to another set of lids later. Now if you have that plan, as you cut these in, just save your templates. You can always lay it over it later. Use your Sharpie, mark out where you're gonna cut it, and cut the, the new lid with your existing templates. Just don't throw them away. A lot of guys are looking for templates because they think once they've used them, they're no good anymore, but as long as you don't throw them away, you're good. We're just gonna protect kind of anything that might accidentally get scratched while we do this. Anywhere that the template touches is mainly what we're taping off so it doesn't vibrate around and leave any marks. We're gonna throw our template on it, make sure we've taped enough. Looks like we've taped plenty. Let's grab our screws and get that secured down. All right, so if you look in the hardware that comes with your cut kits, you're gonna see two shiny screws. Uh, they're gonna be a self-tapping kind of sharp tip on them. Those hold your template to your bag. You only get two because when you're done with this one, just take them out and use them for the other side. These aren't something that's gonna stay in. They just temporarily hold it. So screw those in. Let me grab a drill bit and we'll drill our starter holes. All right, so I normally dr just drill a 5 16 hole. You'll see it's got these little round areas for you to do that. I do one at the top and one at the bottom because it's hard to make those 90s with your, with your saw. So we cut part up here, then we cut the other part at the bottom through these starter holes. Like I say, 5 16 bit, just something big enough that will get your saw blade in without going outside of the lines. All right, there are many ways you can cut this. This is definitely not the only way. This is my preferred way. I like the control I get from this. This is a Milwaukee hacksaw. It's just a one-handed sawzall, so it's easy to hold. And then we buy these special blades that are available. It's just this short uh, scroll cut or jigsaw style blade, but it's meant to go into a sawzall. You could also use a jigsaw, you could use a roto zip. There's definitely other ways you can do it. Uh, I feel this is the best way for us. We have a very short blade, so we don't have to worry about it penetrating anything underneath. Um, but let's get it cut. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna go around this corner and down, followed back to this part. I just stop at each one of the 90s. I don't wanna try to make that with my saw, and then I'll come in the bottom and finish it up. Now make sure, if you notice, this is a pretty wide line. On this kit, we always cut the very outside of that line. back the other way. We got our top part done, let's cut the bottom.
front we've cut all the way through. Again, we're gonna remove these two screws. We'll reuse those to secure our other side. All right, so now you see we've cut it out. We followed that outside line. If we were to keep this template, we could throw this right over another set of bags, mark that out with a marker, take it off. We could cut it. We don't have to have a bunch of these. Uh, they're not, I mean, they are one time use as far as cutting through it, but definitely you can save it and later you may use it to do a different type of lid if you ever replace it. All right, so we're gonna get our tape off. I'm gonna vacuum up this mess and we'll get some assembly going together here. All right, so I went ahead and cut both lids out. We've removed our tape, we've vacuumed up our mess. So now we have this nice hole. We just double check that our grill fits there well. Looks like it fits great. These are the ones we've relogoed with Hertz logos. Now you could, if you wanna make sure these are extra watertight, these have a great gasket on them, but you could put a, a bead of silicone on the underside here. Uh, I, I've gotten where I don't silicone the top of it in because some of these are denim paints. And if I show you doing that and then you do it, you get silicone on the denim, it makes it look shiny. So we don't wanna do that. So we normally would silicone the underside. Now I have plans very soon of replacing these with new Advan Black bags, uh, the CVO style bags and new lids. When we do that, I'll silicone these in for a permanent mount. But for now, we're just getting ready to go to our next show and let you hear it. So we're not gonna silicone them today and you don't have to silicone them. They do have a really nice gasket and they seal very well. Let's drop this in from the back side. All right, so these are gonna fit right in like so. Very, very nice design that fits perfectly in that factory location. We're gonna take our other grill from the other side, put it where it goes on the back side. Now you're gonna have four little screws that do not have a large wafer shaped head. These are more of a button top screw. The four button screws are the ones that actually hold the inner part to the outer grill. We always start all four screws before we tighten any of them all the way down. Now always visibly look at the gaskets on both sides, make sure they're lined up right. Normally they are, but you definitely need to, as the installer, you need to verify all of this is right before you just screw it together. And then we're gonna add an additional gasket to our Hertz speaker we're putting in. I'll show you that and how that works here in a few minutes. See if I can get this screw to line up. We'll start the other side first. A lot of times that helps. If one doesn't line up, just move on to the next one. Get it pulled in some. As I pulled that in, it actually lined the other one up better. So now all my screws are started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all four of them. Now don't go crazy, this is plastic, so get them tight. But don't go so tight that you try to strip the plastic out. There's just no need for it. They will somewhat bottom out and you'll feel that extra tension just stop there. Let's just look at it, I think it looks good. I love the black grill on the white paint. Looks really good, but it looks good with a lot of different colors. So now let's get our speaker mounted up and I'll show you the extra gasket that we apply to it. All right, so Hertz SX690 Neos. We're gonna put these in this bike. I want them to be as watertight as possible. The woofers are actually water sealed with a nice gasket around the middle of the tweeter pole piece. Now the outside of this though has no gasket and it doesn't line up perfect with the precision power cut kit. Uh, it just doesn't do it. It's not going to seal without adding an additional gasket of some sort. Now when you buy this from Volunteer Audio, we try to make sure you get everything you need. So one thing we're now including is this gasket material. It pulls into two parts, one per speaker. It's just a D-shaped rubber gasket and I'll show you what we do with it and how we put it on. So I always go to the side with our terminals and I'll start on that side of the speaker because that's going to be our highest point of our speaker. All right, so just start here on the speaker terminal end with this gasket. We're just gonna self-stick it right on the outside of that factory surround. So now it's gonna look like there's two 
humped up surrounds here. We're gonna pull it just right to, to the edge of it and stick it in place. It is self stick on the back side, so this is not a hard task. This is just gonna give us an extra layer of gasket. Now there's a future cut kit coming from Hertz. It's not available yet, but when they come out with one, it'll have its own gasket included. So if you're watching this in the future and the new Hertz cut kits have come out and that's what you have, it will mate right up to it. We've already seen prototypes of it. I actually have some that we've tested and uh, coming very, very soon. Um, but it'll have a little different outline. Love the precision power cut kit, so they're very strong, they go on very well. So you're gonna run this around, cut this to proper length, just kind of butt these up to each other, and as this tightens down, all this is gonna squish in tight. It's gonna keep us from getting any water, hopefully, in our bags. I know I try my best not to get out in the rain. We're very much so fair weather riders. Some of you guys are crazy and you ride in the rain for days. So this gasket's included to try to keep water out of your bags. So let's go ahead and put this on the bike. Let me show you how that part works. All right, so you're gonna get some screws with this larger flanged head on them that come with the cut kit. We're gonna use those, these are included. And the hardest screw to start is always this one that's hardest to see. So we're gonna start on this inside screw first, line it up with the hole in the cut kit. And I'm just gonna start it just a couple turns. I'm not gonna go tight because we need to start the rest of our screws. Now again, this cut kit is designed for precision power speakers, not Hertz speakers. So I'm gonna give you some tips here that hopefully will make this a little easier on you. So I'm gonna start my second screw in. Again, not tightening it up, just starting it. So our back two are started. Now I'm gonna line up this front screw hole. I'm gonna start it a couple turns. This can be a little tricky. Again, none of them are tightened yet. We're just getting them started. And you gotta lift this speaker out, kind of push that direction to get it to line up. All right, so I've got that one started. So here's the tricky part. So a lot of you, all, you guys call me, they say, hey, this speaker doesn't work, it doesn't line up because this flange on the speaker overhangs the inside of the cut kit. The very, very simple solution. I'm gonna grab one of our panel removal tools, but you could also use just a small screwdriver put something in here, pry that speaker just a little bit. This is plastic. That is going to drop right down in like that. So once that's in place and it's fell in, now we can start this screw. Once we have it started, we'll go back and we'll tighten all of them up. So I make this look really easy. I've done it a whole lot. It's not really hard. I'll make it look a little easier than it probably will be your first time. That's why I'm going through each one of these steps and the order in which I do it, because by doing it over and over, I found the easiest way to do it. So now I'm tightening up my two screws toward the middle. As I tighten this up, it's squishing that butyl rubber gasket down. It's sealing everything really nice. And this is just pulling that speaker inside of that plastic cut kit. It just flexes it just enough that it goes in place. As you see, we haven't distorted, warped, or bent our speaker flange. And you know, you can just tighten this down and it would just bend this edge and it would still work just fine. But that little bit of step of a small screwdriver or pry tool and it fits right in place. Speaker's installed, I'm gonna do that again on the other side, and we'll catch back up here in a minute doing wiring. All right, so I got my bag off. I'm gonna drill a hole. I go right between where the lock goes and the latch goes, so right in this area here. Now I'm using our, uh, these are made by Metro Saddle Tramp, disconnect harnessing. We have another set of disconnects that come from uh, Precision Power. So if we're using the MAA 4.400, you'd get another set and you're gonna find out that it works better to do about where this factory hole is here because it has a 90 degree hard connector. We gotta clear those little side covers that go over our fuse panel. So it would go about where this stock grommet is now. But because we're using the, the very flexible Metro version, I like to drill it right in about this point. So we're gonna go ahead and drill that hole. We can drill it from the inside partially and then we'll finish it on the outside. This drilled hole is a little over five eighths of an inch. I'm using a unibit. Very sharp, so I don't want to go too far, too quick. We're just going into plastic. So 
I've got both parts drilled there. Now we're doing our left side bag. On the left side, you're gonna use your green harnessing. On the right side, you'll use the purple harnessing. They're color coded by EIA color code. So we're gonna feed our wires through. They go to our speaker. We're gonna pull our grommet in. Normally I try to put the cut portion of the grommet downward, and then we're gonna pull it into this hole. This should be a relatively tight fix. We definitely want it to be watertight. You can use your fingernail or even a small screwdriver and go ahead and just pull that grommet and make sure it overlaps all the way around. I'll grab a little screwdriver and do that because I get tired of breaking my nails. All right, so now that I've got my wiring pulled into the bag, I'm gonna put the bag back on the bike, clean this and get everything secured and vacuum our debris out. All right, so I'm just taking a little rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol on a rag and I'm just cleaning the inside of the bag because we're gonna put some zip tie holders in here so we can hold our wiring. All right, so you're gonna get a total of six of these when you buy a kit from Volunteer Audio, three per bag. We're gonna stick one right up here in the top corner our wiring is going to come from here down. We're going to put a couple across the front of the bag. This is just going to be to secure our wiring so that we have a good clean installation inside of here. We're also going to receive inside the cut kit package, you're going to get some zip ties. And they're going to go through that. They're going to be a little smaller. In this case, because it's a police bike and we added all the harnessing, we know that our polarity is going to be correct. So your striped wire is going to go to the negative, positive wire or your solid wire goes to the positive. Now, if you were using a factory backbone connector, we find that Harley is very inconsistent in how that they wire it. And quite often the polarity is reversed in the rear. So you kind of got to know what you're working with. We highly, highly recommend picking up a polarity checker. They're about 12 to $13. And probably the most common issue we see, people call us, they say, hey, my system doesn't have a lot of bass. And then we get them to get a polarity checker and check it. And we find out that there's two, if not three other speakers are wired backwards from the other ones and they don't have any bass. As soon as they get it fixed, it sounds amazing again. Uh, if you come here and you let us do the installation, we always use a polarity checker at the end of every single installation. Even though we feel like we do a, a consistent job of doing it right, we find quite often that Harley's inconsistent in the way they wire. So uh, again, they're about $12, $12, $13 online to pick up a polarity checker. They're well worth purchasing one. So when you're done, you can check, make sure all your speakers are firing the right way. So zip ties in each one of those holders. As you see, we've got a very clean wiring job in and out of this bag. I think it looks really good. I'm gonna replicate that on the other side and then we'll connect our wiring under our seat. All right, so we've got both of our bags. We've got our wiring done. It looks really nice. Now I just wanna show you the disconnect setup. So you're gonna get this Y with your disconnects. It's color coded. The purple one is gonna plug into our purple side bag, which is our right bag. It also says on here uh, that this is your brake side. So that just kind of gives you an indication of where it needs to be. Our green wire is gonna say belt side. It's gonna plug into our left side bag. So once we have those two plugged in, it's as simple as plugging that in to our backbone connector that runs from the front. Now this is a little long, but we've got plenty of room in front of the battery to take this excess wiring and to zip tie it, tuck it down in this hole. And then we're gonna secure both of these wires. Depends on how you wanna do it. I leave them exposed. I worry about service guys not seeing it. They're gonna put a tire on, they're gonna put brakes on. Something's gonna happen in the future, maybe shocks. They take the bag off and they don't see this, I don't want them to break it. So normally we'll leave this exposed right in here. The seat hides most of it, but the service guy's gonna see it to unplug it. So you could also tuck this behind these side panels if you don't wanna see it at all and just make sure you mention it or take it apart so that it doesn't get messed up. But we've seen many, many times the Harley Tech not see the wiring and destroy it taking the bag off. So we don't want that to happen. I'm gonna zip tie around this little frame part in the back on both sides, secure the wiring underneath the bag and uh, 
make it where it all looks good and it's out of the way if we've got to do a battery change in the future. So let me get that secured up and we'll hop back here in a minute and uh, finish connecting to the battery. All right, so I've taken our wiring, we've just secured it down the frame on each side so it's clear of our battery box. That way in the future, if we change a battery, it's not gonna be in the way. The only thing we have left really to do at this point is to connect our power and ground wire up to our battery. Now, Project 5.0, this is our bike. We're gonna be demoing this at a lot of shows. Even though it's not really necessary, we want to put a bigger battery in it. So we're gonna be dropping the largest lithium battery from excess power that will fit in a stock Harley location. So watch our next video. We're gonna release a video on this excess power lithium battery and show you how to install it in your bike. So we're gonna connect the power and ground up as we finish that battery install. So watch that video if you wanna see that take place. Uh, but we're gonna flash up to the front, we'll get the battery in, we'll move up to the front and get our fairing back on and we'll take a listen to this system. All right, let's get our fairing put back together. We're gonna start by putting this vent back in place that we took out earlier. T25 torque screws, just like you took it out. I'll put it right back in. Now you'll see a few of these a T27 would fit in, but this is little brass inserts. Nothing's ever so tight that you really have to have the 27. The 25 works fine. You can use one tool for the entire install process. So our vent goes right back in. That herd stamp looks beautiful and fits great there. As you see, we've tidied up our wire and we've used some zip ties to hold everything where it needs to be. Uh, we don't want to just leave this hanging in the bottom. That's just not going to be good for life expectancy out of any of this. But our module's up high. I'm going to grab our outer fairing and we'll get it set back in place. All right, so we're gonna fish this fairing down here between these lights. Reach my hand in and plug in my headlight, don't forget that. Hopefully soon we'll get to put us a new custom dynamics headlight in. Be taking the fairing back off for that. Just gonna take that center bolt and drop it back in. Now everything's held in place. I'll put just a couple turns on it just to kind of start the wiring. And we'll get our windshield in place. Probably going to be getting a new windshield too. Not a big fan of this one, but that'll be part of the build. We'll figure out. Probably going to go with a, I assume we may go with a Clockworks windshield. If you got any recommendations, definitely leave it in the comments below. So we're just going to get all of these started. I'm going to go around the other side and let's get our other four bolts in. We'll come back here and tighten these and get our windshield where it needs to go here in just a minute. All right, again, as I told you before, and I'm gonna go over it again, the longer bolt goes in your top holes. Definitely don't wanna put them in the bottom ones because you run a risk of actually damaging the outer fairing if you put them in the wrong place. Let me get this where it lines up, it goes back in where it goes. Let's get our short one in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and start the other two and then I'll go back over and tighten them all. You get weird gaps in your fairing if you tighten one before the rest. So once I get my last one in, I'll go ahead and tighten it all the way in, which is the one we're on now. Tighten it all the way down. Go move back up here and tighten the top one, and then we'll go back to the other side. Now I can work on this windshield. Whoever previously put it in has drilled new holes to put it at a different angle. Not a huge fan of that. We'll just get the right windshield. Tighten the two outer ones down. And 
now our middle one all the way. All right, now all I gotta do is straighten out these front lights back where they're pointed the right direction. I think we're good to go. I think it's time to, to put our seat on and get to taking a listen to it. See what it sounds like. All right, so you've seen us install our new Hertz SP4.900, our bag lid cutting kits, our Hertz SX696 by nines, and we've showed you how to wire it and get everything installed to perfection. Now, it, the weather's gotten bad. I wish we could listen to it now. We were gonna take it out because this thing is so loud, it just blows our microphones out here and sounds bad. And I want you to hear the clarity that's really there. Definitely come visit us at the Hog Rally. Uh, should be going on about the time this video launches. Or you can come visit us here in Oliver Springs at Volunteer Audio and listen to it once the rally's over. Maybe we'll see you in spring at Daytona. But we're gonna launch another video soon where we do a big walk away, let you hear exactly what it sounds like. But I hope this has encouraged you and gave you the ability to do an install like this yourself. Save that install money that you would pay somebody else, put that toward more goodies and things that you wanna do on your bike because we've got a long list that we're gonna do to this one. But definitely, thank you for watching our step-by-step -step videos. Thank you for purchasing products from volunteeraudio.com. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Please, if you haven't subscribed, definitely like the video, comment below anything you wanna see done, anything that you have questions about, I'll be happy to reply back and call us at 1-844-30-AUDIO, email us at sales at volaudio.com, or you can just purchase these kits straight at volunteeraudio.com. Go to the motorcycle section, look up the electric glide standard slash police bike builder we have. You can select all of these options and build your own system and have it shipped right to you. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, God bless.